If you love black music, you gotta check out Cue Points. I'm Sir Daniel and I'm a DJ. I'm Jay Ray, a lover of black music history. Join us as two music heads give you the lowdown on everything from the dopest MCs to hip hop and fashion. Listen to Cue Points on your favorite podcast platform and check out our website at cuepoints.com. That's Q U E U E points.com. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Q Points, dropping the needle on Black music history. I am DJ Sir Daniel. And my name is Jay Ray, sometimes known by my government as Johnny Ray Cornegay III. What's happening, folks? Oh, we got a heater on our hands today, Jay Ray. You know, I, I say that all the time, but I really, I really, really do mean it this time. We got yeah. a heater on our hands, so. It's true every week. Before we get to to schooling people on how they can keep up with us and how they can be a part of the Q Points experience, we have something to celebrate. We got Yo, some wins. We got definitely have some wins um, and more wins coming. So, but the big thing that we're celebrating right now is for all of you, wherever you are listening or watching right now, we are on the precipice of having our biggest download month ever last month um was a big month but we're now so january was our big our our current biggest month ever so Mm -hmm. if y'all go and listen to q points right now y'all should go and listen to q points well after this show of course Mm -hmm. right after you listen Go ahead, listen to us uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. So Good Pods, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever. Our website. And uh, that will help us to have our biggest month ever. By the end of this weekend, our hope, Sir Daniel, is this will be our biggest download month ever. That would be a huge accomplishment for us. And that's big, y'all. That's huge, and it's special. It's thanks to you. It's thanks to you, the listener, for yes, the listener. Know, I'm like not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, to you know our guests listening right yes. now. Um, and you know for riding with us for these past couple of years for these episodes that Ain't we're that nuts. in deep. That's nuts. But uh, for those that are like just now figuring it out and just trying to figure out who we are, Jay Ray, tell them how they could be a part of the wonderful uh, Q Points universe that we have here. Absolutely. If you want to get into the cornucopia that is the Q Points podcast. Ooh, cornucopia. The, okay. Listen, I like that word. And first of all, <laughs> I like the way they remember when we were kids, you know, because it's for Thanksgiving, you know, they put the cornucopia out. Mm-hmm. Um, so listen, y'all. You can uh, wherever you are listening or watching right now. If you can hear our, if you can hear our voice, um, you can certainly uh, uh, just subscribe. That's the easiest way to stay up with Q points. Just subscribe wherever you are listening to your podcast or watching your podcast. That's a great way to stay in contact with us. The, the next thing that you can do is you could go ahead to our website at qpoints.com and you can click on the subscribe button. You could become a member that helps to keep the lights on over in Q points land. If you want to keep seeing our smiling faces and all of that, you can uh, help us out there. You could also shop our store at store.qpoints.com. Points.com. Another thing that you can do, which is absolutely free as well, mm-hmm. is sign up for our newsletter. You should do that anyway, because there are things, even in this uh conversation that we are going to talk about, that we probably won't give like a ton of airtime to, but it may end up in the newsletter where we really dive into it, all of that. For instance, leading up to this show, we sent out an email blast from Craig's Pop Life that he went and talked about his top 10 remixes of Martha Wash. The only way you would know that is if you signed up for the newsletter and got the email. So it's completely free. Um, Magazine.qpoints.com. That is a whole other way that you can stay up 
Witcher boys. Membership has its privileges. Remember that when it comes to the Q Points universe, you definitely want to be a part of it. We have been tap dancing around house music and um, divas of house music for a while now on Q Points. We've talked about robin s a little bit here we've talked about crystal waters here and there cc yep. peniston but good morning america recently did a wonderful special on the queens of 90s house music and i was delightfully surprised yeah. that they took the time to do that because it i just recently saw crystal waters in concert at the Rocksteady um, Sound System Party, 4th of July weekend. And Crystal is still here to party and give you a good times, good time, and she's got the bops. Exactly. I mean, iconic songs that you will, that will never leave us and that give us the life that we we need and we deserve. But um, it, J. Ray, it's so important to remember these women and I have my reasons for why it's so important, but why do you think it's important that we recognize them for their contributions? Um, the women, specifically women who are in the genre of house, um, are often faceless. Um, the distinction between, let me see, at least... Four of the women up there, I will say, Robin S, CC, Crystal, and Martha, is that they are names that we remember, right? But let's take Thea Austin, right? Who was sure. this woman who performed as part of this group and made a significant contribution, but we didn't really know her name? That was so true for a lot of 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 house music um because house music is such a producer driven music the the producer or the dj is like the 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 star and then they have featured artists so you don't always get to see them or know who those people are unless you up like me and sir day only reading the liner notes right or you know the voice in the case of martha wash who we'll talk about as we get into this knowing the voice is what did it so I think it's important that these women get their time to tell a story, one, because it's a unique story that only they can tell. Um, and at a specific period of time where all of these women were making uh, this hit house music that was literally changing the world and making house the most profitable genre of music in the world house was hands down for years the biggest selling music in the world and the, on the backs of that was black women black women to this day i don't care what event you go to whether it is a soulful house event or it is a edm event I guarantee you that the voices of black women are going to be coming over them speakers to a oomps oomps or to mm -hmm. a deep groove. So these women, that's why I truly believe that they deserved a moment so that people could at least see these five. Exactly. And so the at the crux of this conversation, like Jay Ray said, house music especially specifically in the early 90s mm -hmm. um came to a i mean a boil i mean it came to a roaring boil at, at the top of the 90s and i think part of that may have been a little help with um through hip house house mm -hmm. music started came up came along on the backs of hip hop and mm -hmm. we had a lot of rappers interpolating their music with house music which made for a lot of fun which made for a lot of classics um, that were on the dance floor, but was mostly underground and stuff that you didn't hear in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, this white boy from Boston, who's the brother of a pop star and an all boy group comes out of nowhere 
and his debut single yeah. is riding on the back of a voice that we're like, this voice sounds very familiar. Yeah. This hook sounds very familiar. And we mm-hmm. find out that Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, which every time I say that, it kills me, the Funky Bunch. Yeah. Right, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Um, is riding off of the back of Lolita Holloway, who's, I mean, who is predominantly featured on this track. Really, you couldn't, you can't, first of all, let's just keep it a buck. Mark Wahlberg's rap is not what you remember throughout that song. You remember Lolita Holloway's voice, and you Absolutely. remember it's such a sweet, part. you know you you remember because that it comes hook. from an iconic song. Yeah, like you don't remember him. <laughs> I mean, come, he had he literally had to start dropping his drawers and showing his underwear in order to <laughs> in order to gain some fame in the nineties or become you know be put up front. And so you know, I found that so we had that, and then you always have these moments where a lot of club music, like you said, was being, um, was growing because of a lot of um, using black women. Let's take Snap, The Power. There was that whole, you know, both um, uh, iterations of The Power are both using a black woman's voice. And that's what we remember the most from those songs. And so again, late 80s early 90s you know who we we forgot to to give it up to and who deserves a lot of credit mm-hmm. yakid k yo Yaakid shout k out to yakid k yeah ushered in a whole a generation of black women in club music like and she so like martha wash yakid k at first was not her voice was heard, but her face wasn't seen. We saw this young lady on this black box out on this black box um, cover. She was the face because again, they thought let's use a model to try and push this music. But Yaki K was the voice you hear on Pump Up the Jam. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the name of the group? Huge Technotronic. Technotronic. Huge, huge song. records. Huge records. And she's from the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. She's from she's a she's from the Netherlands, but she's a black uh, a black mm-hmm. woman um, that really pushed the culture forward, rapping and singing on club beats, and then you know slowly but surely we're creeping forward to the to the early '90s, mm-hmm. and then there's just this ex- explosion of yeah. music featuring black voices yeah um that was a special time so coming out of the 80s house music kind of just really took over so you actually had whole shows remember club mtv they propped up yes downtown julie brown shout out to downtown julie brown black woman having just a whole moment uh, but introducing house music to the U.S. So one of the things to Sir Daniel is one of the things that really did help house is it went overseas, you know, yes. which they talked about in the Queens of the 90s house, where the reason why Crystal Waters and them, they kept to keep making money and performing was they went overseas and kept making music long after America had pushed house music off of the dance floor, which they also talked about in this episode. Mm. Um, And house music kind of replaced, you know, I'm sorry, hip hop replaced house on the dance floors. So, but in that early nineties period, you of course had uh, Thea Austin, who we mentioned earlier. So DJ Sir Daniel mentioned the power So that was Penny Ford. So on the first Snap album, the woman vocalist was Penny Ford. On the back of that, Penny got a solo deal. And um, Penny then released her solo album and left Snap. So then Thea Austin was on the second album. And their big... I wasn't even a fan of this song because it was the kind of house music that I wasn't into. It was too Euro dance. Mm -hmm. But it was... Big rhythm is a dancer was such a big <laughs> effing song. <laughs> rhythm is it was everywhere. Remember jocks? <laughs> remember those jocks and jam CD yep. compilations? The all those commercials. Rhythm is a dancer is <laughs> everywhere, and MTV wore that song out. 
Yep. And the foundation of that song um, is this vocal by Thea Austin. But of course, in that same time frame, it's so funny. Uh, so Mark just said in the chat, it's hypnotic. It's hypnotic. That's true. Now that I'm older, I appreciate rhythm as a dancer. I think some of that is nostalgia, but I also think I get it. Like I'm, I'm more worldly now. I listen to so much stuff that I get what that was giving. But when I was like 12, I did not. Um, <laughs> but um, remember LaBouche? Robin, huh? LaBouche. LaBouche. Oh, LaBouche. Yes. They, like those <laughs> European groups always had a black woman fronting yep. their songs. LaBouche, all of those people, the black women oh, fronting it. Yeah. I forgot all about I wanted to pull out some LaBouche. EMF. Now. EMF. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the K. Was they the K? Yeah, the, and the KLF, KLF too. KLF. The KLF. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. The KLF. That's a whole other story. There's a great. D. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yep. There's a great story about. Um, get it. Okay. So Mark is in the chat schooling us. We're gonna come back to that. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this same time frame, one of the other people that we've of course talked about who was part of this. Uh, Good Morning America segment was Robin S. So we ended up talking about Robin S. First, and I'm going to say this because I want to be real clear. This is where Q Point stands. Robin S. sings down. Oh, she sings. She can sing. I've seen it in person. I've, I've seen it. I've heard her. That is not a question. We ended up first talking about Robin S. Because we were having a conversation about... Andrea Martin talking about demoing show me love. Um, and then I know there's been a lot of talk and, and Robin S sings. So let's just say that. So show me love. Sir Daniel, I got a question. Let's talk about the show me love is a jam is a monster. That song was a monster. That song came out when um when I graduated high school. That song is 30 years old. Yep. Telling my I graduated, I'm class of 93. Mm-hmm. And that song ran the airways, but ask ask the question. Ask so question. the question I have is why do you think that song has the longe- longevity that it has? Ooh. I think it's I really do, aside from Robin S.'s powerhouse vocals, it's the lyric. Mm-hmm. The lyric speaks to everybody that that you've got to show me. Heartbreaks and promises, I've had more, I've had than, my more share. than my share. My God. Just Get Andrea Martin. Alone, Andrea. <laughs> rest, rest in peace, Andrea Martin, because that, yeah, because we were, she had passed away when we, when we mm-hmm. started talking about her and talking about her history and her, her mighty, mighty pen game and clearly her vocal game because she yes. auditioned. We had, we were playing a clip also mm-hmm. of her um, doing a live discussion and she started singing it. And it's like, when you put the two together, you're like, oh, wow, no. you can't even differentiate. Yep. But um but yeah, it's the lyric. And there's this thing that happens in Show Me Love where it you know how it starts off with Robin S's very long ah you know that that, yeah. that mm-hmm. boisterous that boisterous note and then the chorus kicks in. Yeah. But then there's a part in the song where it kind of quiets Quiet. down. And you hear that doom doo 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 doo. Yeah. And that's where the lyric really yeah. showcases and it's like heart breaks and prom- she even quiets down mm-hmm. her vocal to deliver that line. And there's a moment when you're dancing and that pierces your ear and it's like, and you kind of get a little a jolt like, oh shit, was that an emotion? Was that a feeling right. I just felt like? And a memory, a memory kicks in of a love lost, or you know somebody that you've pined for that was never returned to you. All of, I think those things resonate with all of us because it's a story that we all relate to. And so, and it's a question that it's a it's a declaration that people have been making throughout the years: is you've got to show me love. Yes. And everybody, black, white, gay, straight, man, woman, we can all say that lyric and say it with our chest. 
and mm-hmm. mean it because all of us want to declare that you have got to show me love in this life that mm-hmm. we're living. And mm-hmm. so I, it's it's the lyric that really keeps that song alive. Yeah. yeah. Year after year, 30 plus years later. Yeah, it's so interesting that you put it that way because I also think that this this segment that they did was a good way to show these women love, right? Because mm-hmm. for so long, mm-hmm. they even talked about there were moments in award shows where they're like, oh my God, they got to, yeah, they got to talk about us. And then you they see didn't. Crystal, Cece, and Robin like, we got left out. You know, why did we get left out? And I so agree with you that show me love production wise masters masters that aren't and we talked about this with herbie love bug of that um of the ear candy where there's that moment that that thing does it goes up it quiets you down Mm -hmm. it lets you get that lyric in and you can't not dance to it that's the other thing and that's what's missing in so much of pop music today is that I just want to feel good in this. I want to yeah. hit this dance floor and I want to lay it all out on the line. And what we, what these women were doing was they was bringing that good old black church, that black, that black mama into this, uh, onto these speakers when we most needed to hear like to hear that yeah and helping us through these moments so show me love is a thing um of course in this group shoot cc peniston's debut mf album wow finally with its with its poppy flowers and CC wearing like a daisy and a thing. Mm-hmm. A when 60s I first sixties yep. motif. When I first got that record, I didn't know what it was going to give. That record quickly became one of the hottest records in my collection because from front to back, that record went off. I distinctly remember. That. <laughs> Okay, kids, uh, go with me here. I distinctly remember sitting in my, it, this was second period in my typewriting class. <laughs> typewriting. Kids, there were, kids, there were these, these these machines called typewriters that you had to put paper in, and it had keys, kind of like what a laptop has, but there were, but there was nothing digital about it. There was like some ink with a hard um, mechanism to oh, that pound, thing. Out the letter, <laughs> right. pound out the letter on the paper. And you and if you messed up, there was no backspacing. No. <laughs> now, some, now, if you had a fancy one, some of it did have like a little white out in it and you could backspace it and clean it up. But if you messed up, you had to rip out that paper and start all over again. Oh my but God. I was in typewriting class and there was this girl, I'll never forget her. Rash- I think her name was Roshana. She had the CC Peniston album and it was all of the she could talk about. And we had all seen the video and we would be in class. We were like the misfits, the misfit kids. And cause I think she was like in high school, going to clubs, dance clubs. She was one of those, like she mm-hmm. got in the clubs <laughs> she and whatnot. Get in the clubs. <laughs> yeah. And she, you know, we would talk about it and we would just talk about ad nauseum CC Peniston and Crystal Waters, who we're going to get into next. But that album just literally, and this is, I think I was in 11th grade at that time. So Mm -hmm. we're talking about 91, 92, where this came out. And again, another song that speaks to the, uh, a very raw emotion that is shared by all of us. It's like, you can't, I'm experiencing some, this feeling, this love and Finally, it's happened to me. I've heard about it. I've seen other people experiencing it and whatnot. But now it's happening to me. Yep. And describing the person that she's in love with. And it's a very optimistic song. Um, 
the video like we were talking about earlier had that very glowy 60s motif so she had the the bob but and the bell bottoms and the 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 day glow colors and so it it popped and yeah. it gave us that good feeling like yes we're we're still hip hopping and yep. you know hip hopping hooraying with everybody else but this 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 like oh it felt good and it was like how could I not get into this? How can I not, you know, kick my leg up and dance along to it, you know, and 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 think about what love looks like at that age, especially in high school, mm-hmm. you know, you have you fall in love every other minute in high school, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so she got us, and I'll speak for us, she got us at a really good time when we were in she high did. school. Yeah, and and to 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 think about it she of course entered our lives as a dance artist as a as a house music vocalist steve shout out to steve silk hurley by the way mm. um a monster oh, we, got, we got a deep we got to dive we got to do something on steve so yeah. much um but she then by the third single we get keep on walking which is an r&b joint which was just like a bop we go from dance music, like dance, finally, and we got a love thing right into CC got you giving you an eight count and keep on walking is a staple on R&B radio to this day. Um, but that came from this house album because these mm-hmm. black women weren't just and Martha. Martha Wash talked about this in the thing. All of these women talked about this. Like we weren't just, we got put in this box of like, house music divas but they all did so much and cc was giving us r&b bops Mm. you brought up um keep on walking which is like i think my favorite cc peniston song um because it had she had hip-hop she had rap cameos Mm -hmm. rappers cameoing in the videos and everything yep it's just a really dope song but yeah. Yes. Yeah, CC. That you're. You're right. Putting them in that box. I mean, it. It, it worked for them. It made them yeah. a lot of money. Kept their names alive. Like every time they're, you know, when Pride comes around, you know, you're going to see those ladies are going to get pulled up mm-hmm. and put on stage and make their coins just for that, you know, for that month <laughs> or two. <laughs> This is They Reminisce Over You. I'm Miguel. And I'm Christina. They Reminisce Over You is a podcast that celebrates and honors the best in music, movies, and TV from the past. We get into the careers and legacies of some of the biggest names in hip-hop, R&B, and pop culture. From discussing the groundbreaking music of Missy Elliott and Mary J. Blige. To exploring iconic moments in TV and film like the chaos at the 95 Source Awards. They Reminisce Over You has something for everyone. So join us as we reminisce over the artists, movies, and TV shows that have shaped our lives and continue to influence popular culture today. I think Crystal Waters, though. She's a thing. Crystal, she, wow, came out the box swinging. First of all, I think to me, the magic of Crystal Waters was that she didn't sound polished. She At didn't sound all. polished. She didn't yep. sound like anybody else. She, you could tell. It was like, people, people were like, what is this? Like, can she really sing? She can't really sing. But, mm-hmm. however, comma, yep. the magic behind that record <laughs> is undeniable to this day. Yep. Yeah. So you are absolutely right. I think what we what what crystal waters taught at least i can say me is that it how important it is to have kind of a unique and your own sound Mm -hmm. so crystal waters of course comes from a jazz family ethel waters who's here from chester shout out to ethel waters is her aunt so she's giving you a jazz affect on these songs and that's what made it unique but i think to going back to your point though sir daniel 
um, I definitely want you to talk about make it happy because I know we've talked about that uh, <laughs> before as well. But Gypsy Woman as a debut song, one, it used that one loop that was everywhere <laughs> in like the early 90s. That there was like a version of that. Just there's always like a house thing that everybody starts to do. That yeah. was a thing. That um organ. that organ and but more than that she was actually saying something on the song right it wasn't just about the beat crystal actually wrote that song about an experience so that made all the difference so it was not only the production it was the fact that yo this songwriting is like this is a crack songwriting yeah <sighs> I think it's so funny to watch the the newer generations experience Gypsy Woman, and they're right. You know, <laughs> we're all we're part. We're getting our lives to this yes. woman singing about a homeless woman, <laughs> right? You know, putting yes. on makeup. <laughs> and yes, you're right. We are getting our lives to this. You know, to the to this the song about the plight of um of being unhoused. Mm -hmm and the pride in someone that and when you, you have to think about it she's talking about this woman had pride in herself despite yes. the fact that she is um that she is facing uh homelessness experiencing homelessness and then but so to your point like i've always said i know the gypsy woman is crystal water's number one hit right mm -hmm. but that follow-up single making happy that's a that's is a song. That I don't know what was put what they sprinkled in that song. That's hot. But that that song like pierced me in my heart something something crazy and I found when I found out I was in high school, I think it was actually Rashana again telling us <laughs> about the song what the song was about and from what I was told or what I was understood and listening to the lyrics is that the song was about date rape. Mm. or about somebody about where are they going are they going too far she's talking mm. about a couple um they're having fun they want to make happy and i guess she's being pressured into having sex mm -hmm. possibly and so again crystal waters yeah. putting a little um, a sprinkle of message in the music but i'm like mark is in the in the comment saying that there i had the single mm -hmm. listeners I had the single of making happy and there had to have been like at least six remixes on that single, yeah. maybe three on each side. And I would just ride out to that in my, no, it wasn't the 86 LTD at that time. Cause that didn't have a cassette player. It was the, it was my mom's Mercury Sable yeah. <laughs> when she, when she would let me drive it, had the cassette and I would ride out to that thumping that the, the, um, the happy humping mix of mm -hmm. making happy and just a vibe out to that and it was just such a good time mm -hmm. her storytelling but that combination of those beats had us going like crystal waters that that surprise and i yeah. that song so surprise was yeah. just a title track i've been getting into that a lot more lately i don't nice. know what it is it's like an ear earworm one day mm -hmm. and i just started i was like let me download surprise yeah and I just, it's its a really sleek, silky kind of meandering vocal that she does that is what she was known for. And it definitely set her apart. Like I said, I just saw Crystal Waters um, earlier in July, 4th of July weekend. Um, she looks great. Yeah. Um, the crowd, regardless of, I mean, a, a whole... Um, demographic of ages mm -hmm. we're getting into that song i mean people my age older younger know her music yeah and it was just really wonderful to see that she came through the 90s she got through yeah. that, that place because a lot of people didn't make it through the <laughs> through the 90s and the early yeah. 2000s and she's still out there perf like performing performing you know what i'm saying she's I got dancers that. on stage she's live singing like it's not like mm -hmm. it's not a put on um, there is so much that was important about that first album. Of course, we know the monster hit from the second album, 
uh, 100% pure love. Um, but I think it is really important. Martha Wash makes me run around the church a little bit. If I could run around this, this room and I want to say something real quick here and now it is absolutely criminal mm. that a lot of people still haven't heard Martha Wash's debut album. That album is chock full of house music classics. So today, as I was getting ready for this show, I dropped, uh, so what you gonna do? I was like, this joint right here goes hard right now. Martha Wash got to do this album after having to sue all of those Italian producers mm -hmm. because they was using her. Yeah. They was, Ooh. is her name even on there listed anywhere on that one? Sir Daniel no, is looking also. at black box, um, the back of the black box to see if Martha Wash's name is anywhere. Nope. Is it, it's nowhere, nowhere on, on it. I don't have my readers y'all. Um, but I don't see her name. No, mm -mm. that woman had to literally sue them people. And this is Martha Wash, to be clear for Sir Daniel and I, she's a voice of our generation. We not only knew her as part of the weather girls, we not only knew her as the woman who sang that crazy ass section of centipede on the Reby Jackson joint. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. That voice that you hear that's doing that crazy part is Martha Wash. Michael Jackson was like, Martha, come on in here and get this vocal together real quick. Please sing this for us. Please sing this for us. But she went through all of that as a black woman of size. And then was they attempted to erase her, but they yeah. wanted to use her voice. But she got out of all of that. They gave her a record deal. We ain't go buy the damn record. We should have black people. We failed this woman. We ain't go buy the record. <laughs> but we bought all the other records that she was on. And meanwhile, this record is a classic. Point is, this woman, Sir Daniel, deserves, she deserves her Lifetime Achievement Awards for giving us so much as black people. Martha Wash is a voice of a generation. I I can't really add on to anything you just said. Like, you hit the nail squarely on the head with that. Martha Wash, it is criminal how we, I'm talking mm -hmm. about the Black community, how we let her down. Mm -hmm. um, because we've been throwing shoes at our stereos for decades because of her voice. Like, to this day, when I hear um, Just Us, Mm -hmm. by her and, and Zora. Mm -hmm. It makes me tear up a little. Uh, I think about the the journey she did with Sylvester. Yes. Two tons of journey, fun. <laughs> two tons of fun and what they went through. But I mean, it is textbook. It is a textbook lesson of what the industry, how the industry uses, will pick you apart mm. and use what they want of you and mm. throw you throw the rest to the side and not give a damn about you. It's just really about what benefits the the machine at the time. And so, you know, I'm so glad that what and we laugh about it and you know, we laugh about who they bring out when it's time for pride celebrations. I'm I'm happy that these women have an audience that sticks by them and will keep them um uh, employed keep the lights on keep them singing um signing autographs still creating in the studios creating new product because when you have when you're blessed with that kind of gift and martha Waj vocally is right up there with the greats like you could put her right next to i'm pretty certain she's on the backgrounds of some of those um CNC Music Factory, Clavillis and Coles Production. produced Aretha Franklin's yeah. Aretha Franklin stuff. I'm sure you could put Martha Wash's voice up against Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I if I dare so say so, Martha Wash might out <laughs> might have outsung Aretha Franklin in her day. <gasps> I 
Sir Daniel. I know that's blasphemy, whatever, or whatever, <laughs> but I mean, just think about no, it. She, I, it's, she, has a, she has a beautiful voice. I mean, she sits at that same it, table. It just cuts through. There's no, yeah. there's no question who she is. You know that that's Martha Wash's voice. And Carlton is in the chat. Um, and he brought up Jomanda. We haven't talked about Jomanda yet, but there are some ladies that were not Mm -hmm. a part of this Good Morning America special that we feel should have been a part of it. Um, we talk about the era of the Weather Girls and Two Tons mm -hmm. of Funs. Two Tons of Funs. Two Tons <laughs> of Fun. <laughs> and But you can't... We think about Joycelyn Brown. Ooh. Who's... Um, I'm somebody else's God, y'all. Yes. Is like... Somebody else's God is like... Is clearly like a club... Is a club classic. Is at the foundation of club music yes. and uh, again another big huge voice that we want to pay homage to but also we got to pay homage to barbara tucker baby we could run around we could run around this church again you know <laughs> barbara tucker and you may not know her by name mm. but you you know, know her you know, deep, deep, deep inside, deep, 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 deep inside. inside. That's, that's Barbara Tucker. And she is still doing dates with Louis Vega. Louis Vega is on the turntables. And she has that microphone and she is singing her face off. Absolutely. Listen, Barbara Tucker, Beautiful People is one of the most lovely songs Um that you can ever it's just a it's it's a great classic house song um we probably need to do a whole show on strictly rhythm just keep that in mind we're gonna bookmark mm. that because there's so many joints beautiful people was released on strictly rhythm produced mm. by louis vega co-written by india shout out all of the things it's it's all of the things right but uh carlton in the chat uh, dropped. I get lifted. I get lifted is another banger from from Barbara Tucker. So we're talking about these women that just had these amazing, amazing house hits. And um, going back to real quick, um, Jocelyn Brown got new joints out now. If you go over to Track Source, Jocelyn Brown is out here singing her face off still to some <laughs> to some beats. And you can have her on right now. So I um, definitely, these women, I know that we mentioned Lolita Holloway earlier, um, mm -hmm. coming out of the disco era and then helping, weirdly, to usher in Mark, Mark Wahlberg into our world. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a weird thing. And rest weird. in peace to Miss uh, to Miss Holloway. She passed away um uh, almost 10 years ago wow, probably over 10 well, yeah. years ago now mm -hmm. um but these voices yo sir daniel these when we walked in these spaces um needing to get free mm -hmm. these voices were the ones that were coming out of the speakers helping us to get to the other side of whatever that thing was we was going through Absolutely. Um, Carlson mentions uh, De Daje mm -hmm. uh, that you got me up. Yep. Uh, yes. There, it is a legend. It is part of Atlanta legend um, that there in the days of the club called Loretta's. Yes. Was a gentleman who was a part of a very well-known choir here in, in the Atlanta area who, when that song would come on, all the first of all, all the church kids will go up <laughs> right. when you got me up in brighter days. Specifically, mm -hmm. you got me up came on. They would lose their frigging minds. There was a gentleman in particular that would balance things on his head when songs like that were playing. It could be it would start off with a cup, and it would might end up with a chair, a complete chair on his head, fanning himself singing along to the song and he mm -hmm. was he would be like going to his aria voice singing along, <laughs> singing along to the song but you're talking about the music that would inspire that kind of behavior was always 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 
joint con- um, connected to a black woman's voice. And so, yes, we got to mention um, her. We got to mention Pepper Mache. Yeah. Um, let's get something wet. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> all the, you know, the, that those big black voices that the people love, you know, you know, white people love those big black voices. It's very soothing to them. Right. <laughs> It might remind them of a housekeeper they had in the day that took care of them, (laughs) their nanny. I really enjoyed doing this particular episode, J-Ray, because the people that we were paying homage to originally, of course, are the queens of 90s house music. The women, the Black women, some faces that you know and names that you know offhand, but then there are a lot of faces and voices that you don't or you never saw Mm -hmm. because a lot of them, their voices are disembodied and used to make these hit records. But we want, here at Cue Points, we want you to know that we think about you and we salute you for all that you have provided to this moment, to this yeah. moment that there's a, you know, Beyonce, the biggest star in the world right now, is paying homage mm-hmm. to the work, to all the work that was laid down by a lot of you. And we want to say thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you from Q Points. This is what we're here to do, man. Like, um, thank you. And we also got to shout out ABC. ABC didn't have to do this, right? Everybody is in this moment and we're happy because we're doing it too. We're celebrating 50 years of hip hop. So everybody are kind of mm-hmm. like heavily concentrated on hip hop to break away and say, you know what? We want to talk about the women whose voices we heard in 90s house tracks is yes. commendable. So thank y'all so much for doing that. And we'll make sure that we also include the link to that uh, uh, broadcast so y'all can watch the full 20 minutes because um, it, it really is important. And we we only scratched the surface. We talked about this from the perspective of that. There are, as we, there's so much more history that we could talk about here. So it's not going to be the end. We still have more to talk about <laughs> as it relates to this topic. Um, but so happy that we did this. So, yo, stay up with Q points. The way to stay connected to us is if you're listening right now, subscribe, share the show with your friends and family, let them know about Q points, because if you really like us, they will probably, uh, you will like us too. Oh, before I keep going, We are almost at our biggest month ever. So if you haven't listened to this week's show, go on over to your favorite podcast platform. Listen to this week's show. Share this week's show with your friends. So Q points by the end of this month can have our biggest month ever. We are uh, so close. We're like 15 downloads away. That's how close we are. So y'all can help us out. So um, now, Back to the regularly scheduled program. (laughs) Visit our website, qpoints.com. Click subscribe. You can become an insider. Uh, Shop at our store, store store.qpoints.com. And last but certainly not least, um, visit our uh, newsletter, magazine.qpoints.com, and join that because we are sharing all types of stuff over there, um, exclusive stuff, background stuff, additional stuff. So some of the stuff that we talked about tonight that we didn't go into a lot, will likely end up in the newsletter next week. So y'all want to be down for that. Jerry, Ray, what do we always say? In this life, you have a choice. You can either pick up the needle or you can let the record play. I am DJ Sir Daniel. I am Jerry, Ray, y'all. And this has been Q Points Podcast, dropping the needle on Black music history. We will see you on the next go-round. And scooby dooby dee scooby doo 